So today, I am going to make some cabbage soup. I love me some cabbage, y'all. I please share, sprinkle, and splatter. So, I went to the farmer's market here in Detroit, and I got this huge, huge head of cabbage. Look at this bowl back here, son. You see that? Look at, let me turn this burner on. So I have got four chicken thighs in my pan with some chicken stock, chicken broth, chicken broth, chicken broth, or stock one. And so we are going to make cabbage stew. So it calls for lemon juice, but I've got lemon juice, so I'm going to use just a little bit of apple cider vinegar. So, I'm going to turn you guys around. I got everything cut. Let me show you. Look, this girl been cutting and cutting and cutting. Look. So, I got green beans. I have yellow squash. We got some tomatoes. And as you can tell, I cut some to fresh tomatoes and put in there. I got some kohlrabi. I got some winter squash. I got yellow onion. I got some green bell pepper and a little bit of red down there because there was a piece left in the refrigerator. I got some red potatoes. I got some celery and carrots. And I got an ear of corn. And I'm going to shell that in there. And so, of course, I've got my chicken in here with a little bit of cabbage and some chicken broth. And then I got my spices. And my spices, I will be using garlic, Italian seasoning, that's more chicken broth, but it's zero. It's like like chicken bouillon. It's chicken bouillon without the salt in it. Parsley, whole oregano, and basil leaves. And then a little bit of apple cider vinegar because I didn't have any lemon juice. Because like with a lot of a cabbage and squash, you need a little bit of lemon juice. Jerry's trying to text me. A little bit of lemon juice because it just does something for it. Hi, you guys. Hi, Kim. Hi, beautiful. I am at Brenda's. I, this is Brenda's house. This is Brenda's house. Look at that big old counter. That's some more karabi. The karabi I got. Wait till y'all see the pictures. I took pictures and I will be doing a, a reel on FB. So, yeah, this is Berinda's house. She's got a nice little home. It's so nice here. I love it here. This is home to me. This is like going to mom's. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, Brenda is gone with her sister, Linda. Uh, little Missy's mama. And so, I'm making some cabbage soup. Because we went to... Look, at I'm sweating like a stuffed pig, son. Because I was cutting all the vegetables and... It's humid here today, let me tell you. It is humid in Detroit today. Hi, Miss Purple Apple. Okay, I'm going to put you guys up in your chair. Right like that. And I'm going to put you on the pan. I want that to come to a nice boil. need to put just a little bit more um, broth in there. So what I'm going to do... Let's put about four more cups. So I'm gonna let you guys, this is sliding. I'm gonna let you guys watch me over here. I'm gonna turn some water on. And I'm gonna get a measuring cup that she has up here. So we're gonna do two of these, because this is a two cupper. So we're going to use four cups. Okay. Let me get a measuring spoon. Okay. And we are going to use this. This is our bouillon. This is chicken bouillon with zero salt. This is pretty new. And I love this because... You get the nice chicken broth flavor without all the sodium. With, so it doesn't damage or hurt and stuff. So I'm going to put you guys over here. And here's my two cups of water. That's my recipe. That's my recipe. 
that's two cups of water. And in this water, I will do two tablespoons of the chicken bouillon. Just like that. And I'll mix that all up in there. Zero salt chicken bouillon. How groovy is that? I love that. And just dissolving it in the water. There we go. Excuse me. Okay, so there is two cups of the chicken bouillon. With that, I'm going to dump that in our pan over here. I'll show you. So I'm going to dump that right down in my pan. Right there. Okay, and we're going to do two more cups. No, maybe not. Let's, because the cabbage, I'm just going to rinse that out. Cabbage makes water on its own. So we're not going to use no more, no more stock. There, okay. I'm going to turn you guys around and we're going to start making this. I do have four chicken thighs in my pan with my chicken broth. So let me turn you guys around. Let's put you guys up here. Let me, well, there we go. There we go. So just so you can see. Last time somebody made a comment about this. This is glue because this is broke. So don't freak out. So how about that? I'll just move it so you can't see it. There we go. I wish I could put you guys like up over here. I might be able to. Let me try to let me see if I can. Yeah. That's better, isn't it? So you can see in there better. There we go. My spoon was under the handle. So I have a little bit of cabbage in there. And I've got four chicken thighs. And now, while these, while this, I'm waiting for this to come to a boil. I'm going to put my seasonings in there. Okay, because we want that to come to a real hard boil. Okay, so we will do one teaspoon of basil. So there's a teaspoon of basil. Can y'all see that? Teaspoon of basil right there. We will do a half a teaspoon of oregano right there. There's a half a teaspoon of oregano. Get the lid back on it. Okay. We will do one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. You can see that? We want one teaspoon. Right there, Italian seasoning. There we go. And we want two tablespoons of minced garlic. If I can open the jar. There we go. Up. My hands still work, sorry. So, there's one. And there's two. So we got two tablespoons of minced garlic. And we will do one tablespoon of our apple cider vinegar with the mother. Just one tablespoon. You don't need much. I don't need much, but I know I love you. Right there. It does make a difference when it comes to squash and cabbage. Usually, I use lemon juice, but if you don't have lemon juice, vinegar, vinegar works, and you can't taste it. It just, it just does something to the flavor, I'm telling you. So, we're going to let that come to a boil. While that comes to a boil, I'm going to put all these spices back away. She has made her own little spice. Oh, I didn't put the 
parsley in yet. But the parsley, so I do got parsley to put in there, but that I'll do last. Okay. Oh, and black pepper. I'm not going to put a lot of black pepper. And I made some chili, remember? I put way too much black pepper in there. Okay, let me. And this time I'm going to use the whole peppercorns. That's about a half a teaspoon. So we'll throw that in there. I always overdo it with the pepper. We don't know why. We don't know why, but we do. There we go, just like downtown. I think I'll put just a little bit of salt in there. And I do use my hand as a measuring spoon. So there we go, just a little, oh, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And then we'll stir that. Pepper and salt in there, just like that. And this chicken, we will pull out and pull the bones out later. But just right now, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to let that cook up. And I want that liquid to boil. When that liquid starts boiling, I'm going to add my cabbage. Can you all see that? Good. There we go. When this starts boiling, I will add my cabbage. Let me see if I can. So when cabbage cooks up, it gives juice. You get juice from the cabbage, so. There we go. We won't lose power now. Okay. So as y'all can see, I did a lot of chopping, cutting, peeling, and chopping and peeling, and cutting and chopping. Go. Okay, so now we want this to come to a nice bowl. And I'm just waiting for that to boil. You can use chicken stock or you can use vegetable stock. I like the chicken stock. I really do like the chicken stock because it has a little more flavor, I personally feel than the vegetable stock. I just like to use the no salt. Hi, Emma, I feel good. I just like to use the no salt and this is why. When you use the no salt, you can control how much salt you put in your dish. And so, and if you use all fresh products like we're using, you know, all fresh. With no salt added, like I cut my own potatoes and carrots and green pepper and onion and kurabi, my winter squash, and don't use this. This is another thing. Winter squash is really hard to peel when it's raw, but you, you have to get the squash away from the peel because... The, you can eat the, the green peel of the winter squash, but it's very tough and it's like leather in your stew or your soup. So don't use the peeling of a winter squash, the yellow squash. You can use the peel, a zucchini, you can use the peel. But a winter squash or an acorn squash or, you know, a spaghetti squash, don't use the peel. It's very, very tough very it's like leather it's like trying to eat a piece of leather so just fyi just to share okay so this is getting pretty hot and i'm going to bring my big bowl of cat and this is only a half of head of cabbage right here believe it or not i'm gonna start throwing this in there that cabbage is so big. I got one in the car. I'll show y'all. I'm going to make stuffed cabbage with when we go home. Man, these, this head of cabbage was so big. I mean, when I seen it, I was like, it's a dream. And the same with the karabis here. Oh, my Lord. The karabis. I got another one of them. And the, Oh, no. I think I gave it to my brother, Gerald. 
Yeah, actually, I know I did. I blessed my brother Gerald with some veggies, so. Yep. So there it is. So I'm stuffing our cabbage. And look at all this cabbage. This was only a half. A half a head. There's still another half that I have baked up and put in the refrigerator for Brenda to use. Because I have another one. There we go. I have another one in my car to take home. So tomorrow I have to go home because I have a doctor's appointment. So. Okay, now what I usually do at this point, let me, I drop some cabbage. So I want to pick it up because we want it all. Waste not, want not. You all already know. Yesterday I made chili on here and somebody commented. So part of my lingo is that's how I roll. That's the way we do it. Just like downtown, just like mom used to make. And she was like, I like, I like watching you, but can you stop saying that? I'm like, excuse me? That, that's who I am. That's, that's how I talk. That's how I talk. That's, that's, that's what I do. Okay, let's see if this works there. Oh, that one's a little big. Let's see if this one works. There it is, just like downtown. We knew we would find it, so we got that covered. And we are going to let this boil. Where's my laptop? In the living room. We're going to let this cook down for a little bit. We've got our chicken broth, our chicken thighs, and we have our cabbage. And this, you see how full this pan is with this cabbage. We'll give this about five or ten minutes. And we'll be back. And we will continue from there. So this is part one of our cabbage soup. Do y'all want me to stay live? Smash those hearts. Yes. Do y'all want me to stay live while we're cooking and just chit chat? Or do would you like me to end the live and come back after the cabbage is cooked down a little bit? Your choice. Mrs. Pro, I've never tried chicken with cabbage soup, only ground beef or vegetarian style. The last cabbage soup I made, I cheated and used one of those cold slaw packages and added extra veggies to it. Stay, Miss Purple said. Is she the only one with an opinion? Stay, Kathy said. Okay, well, we'll stay. I guess we'll go sit and talk about it price of rice in China. What do you think? Stay. <gasps> J my hubbison is here. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Good idea, Miss Purple Apple. Yay, okay, we'll stay then. That's what y'all want. That's what we'll do. Let me grab a water. Okay, this is going to take a minute. So I'm going to turn you all around. Hi there. We're going to go in here. Let me turn this light on. Put a little light on the subject. Let me go grab my laptop. Be right back. She's back. There it is. Okay. Let me come over here. Over here. Not over there. Over here. There we go. Let's turn it all around here. Okay, let's 
see here. Somehow I got tangled cords. There we go. And we will plug this in over here. There it is. Just like downtown, y'all. There it is. And this is what we can do. I do have an idea sometimes. So while that is cooking, look at my natural color, y'all. Look at, I got all that blonde cut off. This is all natural. Look at, I'm sweating. I have been having hot flashes, 40 going north, y'all. I mean, you can tell my hair's all wet. Okay, let me, there we go. Okay, so this is what I think we can do. Let me, let me go here. Let's go look and see if Miss Kim has sent any prayers since we've been here. No. Well, if Miss Kim can send us some prayers, or we could just go to the prayer page. Yeah, that won't hurt, will it? Let's just go to the prayer page. So we have got a lot of, a lot of prayer requests this week. And because I haven't been live, I have been in Detroit, but I have been paying attention to the prayers and K Powers and Lynn Rutledge has been doing their thing. These prayer warriors has been on top of all of the prayer requests. They have prayed for everybody, 40 going north, 90 going west, and 80 going east. So there it is. That's, that's how we roll. That's how we do it. Just like downtown. <laughs> there it is. So everybody keeps saying how different I look with my natural color hair. This is all natural. Look at that, y'all. Look. Isn't it beautiful? It's silver gray. It's like gray and silver and a little bit of white here and there. What do y'all think about it? Thank you for the hearts, Melissa. I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. I am for real. Never meant to make your daughter cry. I apologize a million times. From the UK, welcome Wendy Batten from the UK, girl. Love right back to you. So let's see here. So I've been paying attention to these prayer requests. Let me go. Let me go check that. Let's go look at the. Let's go look and see what we got in here. Let's just look at it. Let's just see. I don't know if y'all can't see that too tough. But... Oh yeah, I can hear that boiling down in there. Sure can. It's boiling up nice. Yeah, that cabbage, look at that. How far it has already cooked down. Man, I wish she had metal utensils. There we go. Just like that. Look at that. I'll show y'all in a minute. That is cooking down just nice. Look at that. That is cooking down mighty fine. Oh, I love cabbage. I love cabbage. My husband does not like cabbage. Jerry hates cabbage. He hates it. I mean, and he'll eat it to make me happy. But that's why when I come here, I make all the stuff that he don't like. Just because I love it, man. I could live on veggies like this. So that's cooking down mighty fine. Oh, see that? That is looking good, y'all. 
So we're going to put our lid back on it. Just like that. Let's see here. She has got these rich people. Let's see. I don't know how that goes. It's got like a twisty thing on here. But there it is. So we're going to let that cook. There we go. Until that cabbage is cooked out. And this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do that's different. Oh, I have a lot of family on my dad's side with the last name Wade. Really, Deb? Where, where is your Wade family at? My Wade family is in New Jersey. Um... Wisconsin, Minnesota, Missouri, and Michigan. That's that's where all of my family is. We have like our Wades is um yeah, New Jersey, Wisconsin. Oh, there's some in Montana, Minnesota, Missouri. I love to Cali too. You love California? That's so cool, Deborah. Maybe you and Mama D are related. I know, wouldn't that be groovy? You need to take a test on 23 and me. That's what you need to do. Because I have done my DNA test on 23 and me. Oh, somebody said. Oh, Tinker. Hey, Tinker, how you doing? Okay, so there it is. Taylin and Kim are er, girl, yes, they, and Lynn. Lynn Rutledge prays over every one of them. Kay, Kay does, Kay Powers, and Lynn Rutledge. They will respond right to you guys. And sometimes, um, we have a couple other ones that um, don't necessarily say anything or post anything, but they pray over it, you know, like they just, they pray. I made chicken and sweet potatoes and macaroni and cheese. Oh, yum, Kenzie. Thank you. It's all natural now. I got it all cut. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I love how she made these little little fringes. I just love them little things right there. Yep, she d I think she did. But then when I'm cooking, I do this. Just because I get hot and I sweat, so I tuck it behind my ears. But I can do it different ways, and I like that. You know? Got to go for church tonight now. Love you guys and take it easy. Oh, man, say a prayer for all of us, girl. This is Wednesday. Yep, this is Wednesday. Okay, so anyhow. So I am going to tell you guys this is what we're going to do this different. While we're cooking our cabbage, before we put all the other vegetables in it, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do something different. I'm going to share people's prayer requests. I'm going to share with them or with you. Either you can write their names down or you can just make a mental note, but there's a lot of prayer requests. So mental notes are a little bit hard. The green is Ka'ali, my language. Oh, wow. So everybody, Melly is from Finland. So she is Finnish. And so she was commenting in her language, Kenzie. Thank you so much, Melissa Jackson. Melissa Ann. Thank y'all. Please share, sprinkle, and splatter. Because other people may want to know how to make cabbage soup too. But anyhow, so while we are waiting for the cabbage to cook down a little bit, I'm going to share with you guys. You know what? I need to get my my reading glasses, and I believe they're out in my vehicular. But that's okay. We, we can do it. 
We can do it without it. My eyes are running. Look at that. Okay. So I'm going to share the prayer requests. And after I'm done sharing them, this is what we're going to do. Then we're going to do a generalized prayer for everybody. Because God knows. He's an all-knowing God. And so, okay, so is that okay with you guys if we do it that way? Hey, Cindy Marshall. How you doing, sweet girl? Please share sprinkle and splatter. So is it okay if I read the prayer request to you guys and then we do like a, a all-inclusive prayer for everybody without calling out their names? Because once we mention them and then God knows, you know? Nobody, nobody wants to answer. Hi. Somebody tell me. Yes, let's do it that way, Mom. I'm doing okay. Yes. Okay, thank you, you guys. Thank you, Melly. Thank you, Kenzie. Okay, so. Thank you, Cindy Marshall. Thank you, Wendy Batten. I miss you guys so much. Okay, so we have Kimberly Simons who had to put her mom on hospice care yesterday. She was, no, she has cirrhosis of the liver and she has one to two weeks left to live at the most. Prayers with this. I also say be sure you, you have a will and let your family members know where it is going along with any life insurance policies. Kay Powers and Lynn Rutledge prayed for her. Robert Sumner said, please pray for me as the Lord knows, which means thank you, Miss Purple, unspoken for, for Robert. Lynn and Kay also prayed over him. Sharon Irwin, prayers for my family, unspoken. Kay and Lynn prayed over her. Kathy Clement, unspoken prayers. Kay, Kay and Lynn both prayed over her. Carolyn Fleming, unspoken for her and her family. Kay and Lynn prayed over her on the page. Janice Rosehart, unspoken. Kay Powers prayed over her. Rose Conklin, unspoken prayers for everybody that's here today for their health problems, family problems, and financial problems, and prayers for all the people in the world and overseas, especially prayers for Mama D and family. God bless you all in here today. Amen. Love, Rose. She's so sweet. Isn't she a sweetheart? Kay Powers prayed over her her request and Lynn Rutledge also Berta Kayaris prayers for her fibromyalgia and her arthritis pain to subside and end her flare it's so painful physically and mentally Um, Kay Powers prayed over her and Lynn Rutledge also. Angela M. Holtz said, I appreciate the spiritual page. Thank you. Please continue to pray for my mom. She had complications with her medication and they're trying to acclimate her physical and mental state. Her father's bone cancer and she's continuing to be in rehab for her son's biceps, trying to take care of them all and take care of herself has been very challenging. God bless you. Happy Sunday. And thank you, finally, Angela. So she must have posted this Sunday. I talked with Byron. She's going to drive to see if I can come to Washington. Cool. K Powers, K Powers, and Lynn Rutledge both prayed 
over Angela's prayer request. Susan Cry, please, please pray for my daughter and her boyfriend and a new baby, my granddaughter. Please let them find good jobs, careers, and can support and help their family with the house. Let him find a good job to support these two girls. They are str it's struggling times. Please help them with prayer. Kay Powers and Lynn Rutledge both prayed over Susan Cry's prayer requests. Bridget Kimmy put hearts for love. Kay Powers and Lynn Rutledge retched back out to Kimmy and showed her love back and told her, God bless you. Oh, I love them too. Me on them girls right there. They, she, they sent hugs and love. And Lynn, Lynn Rutledge has asked for prayers for her son Gabe and her family and her friends that struggle with harshness in their marriage. Kay Powers said, Father God, I ask you answer each prayer. Oh, Lynn responded to Kay's. Kay asked for prayers, for unspoken prayers. And Kay Powers said, um, Lynn prayed over Kay Powers, our prayer warriors. And she um, said, God bless you and prayers for you and Gabe. So Gabe is Lynn Rutledge's son. Let me share a little bit with you about Lynn Rutledge. Lynn Rutledge is one of our prayer warriors. Very dedicated. Every day she comes and she prays over the prayers on the prayer post. Make sure if you do post a prayer post on Mama D's prayer request and praise reports, that you post under the post on that page, under the prayer post. And so faithful Kay Powers and Lynn Rutledge pray over all of them. And Kim Swain also, as she adds them to the Word document. But Lynn Rutledge has a, a son that has disabilities and he was in the hospital not too long ago and he has lost the will to want to drink. And, but if he doesn't drink, he's going to end up back in the hospital. So it's been a struggle for Kay. She has had to follow him around literally in his wheelchair with a syringe of water, squirting it in his mouth all day long to make sure that he gets, you know, li the liquid, the water that he needs in his body. And so uh, it's it's been it's been a, an overwhelming battle for her, and she still manages to access the prayer page and pray for all of those requesting prayer. She's an amazing woman of God, and I love her so much. So that's just so you know. Continue to pray for her son. I'm a people watcher, and the neighbors just pulled up the two little girls, and they went bye-bye. I am ready to see you, Melly, whenever you come and visit. Okay. Rhonda Barth, Bright, B-L-Y-T-H just put some hearts and just showed some love. Kay and Lynn both gave hugs, you know, emoji hugs. And Kay said, God bless you, Rhonda. Julie Simpson said, please, prayers, please. Lynn and Kay Powers responded to her. So that's unspoken. Elsie Orsky, please pray for me and my daughter and granddaughter for our health, peace, and happiness. Kay and Lynn Rutledge prayed over both of them. Alma Huntley, Boatwright, 
showed some love, and asked for prayers. And of course, Lynn and Kate Powers reached out to her so unspoken for Elma Boatwright. Fonda Bassett Eisenberg said, please, I need your prayers to heal my body from my health problems. God bless you. Um, there was five replies to that. Kay Powers and Lynn Rutledge both reached out and prayed for her. Cynthia Starnes Kelly, prayers unspoken. Lynn and Kay reached out to her. Eloise James, unspoken. Lynn and Kay reached out to her. Jamie Millsap, prayers that I get better mentally and pray my daughter and our relationship gets better. Replies from Kay and Lynn. Janice Campbell said, please pray for me. I was in the hospital and thought I had a heart attack, but it looks like stomach problems. I need healing from for my bowels and intestines and my GI tract. Two replies, one from Lynn and one from Kay for prayers over her. Donna Sparks Powell said, please pray for me. This pain is unbearable. It takes all prayers I can get. I'll take all the prayers I can get. May God heal us all. Keep the faith. Lynn and Kay responded to her with prayers back. I love you too. Casey, hi. Hey, everyone, please share this live out. Thank you, Melanie Page. I love you. Nancy Kioski asked for prayers and said amen. Prayed over them, you know, unspoken. Tracy, I smell that. We need to go check it. So you can see because I think it's time to start putting veggies in. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, heaven. Look at that. You know what? I'm gonna use this big old spoon right here. Just because it's metal. And I can look at that, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that chicken cooking right off the bone. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Look at that. I'm going to pull what's on the bottom and flip over on the top. Okay. Okay, y'all ready? Here we go. Winter squash. One cup. Here we go. Got my dishwater. Kurabi, two cups. Now, kurabi is kind of like, this is even good raw. That's so good. Mm. Kurabi is, is kind of like potatoes, but the flavor is so savory in soups and stews. Right now, I'm just putting the hard veggies in there. So there's some carrots and some celery that I have got diced up. I'm going to tuck that all down in there. Just like that, and we're going to let this cook down a little bit more. We're going to cover it, and we're going to walk away. Well, maybe I should put the potatoes in there, too. So, the green pepper, the onions, the tomatoes, the yellow squash, and the... I'm, I'm going to throw them green beans in there. That's two cups of green beans. That was actually fresh. But Brenda had them cleaned and frozen, so she pulled them out and said, we can put green beans in there. So there it is, just like downtown. <laughs> just like downtown. I'm not, yeah, I'm going to throw the, the red potatoes. 
So that's just a few red potatoes. And then we're going to cover it. That. And we're just going to let that cook down. Just let it cook. And I'm going to eat this raw kohlrabi right here. Did I? Yeah, there we go. This is going to be some yummy stew, y'all. Cabbage soup, son. And I know I do it different. I put a little bit of everything in there. But when it comes to fresh vegetables, I'm crazy about them. I know, Betsy, right? I've been posting. We're on seven days now. I love karabi, y'all. I love you more, Cindy. You got a new stove. I love a gas stove. Cindy does? No, I'm at Brenda's house. I love karabis. I know, Betty. Betsy, me too. I love them. Thank you, Robbie. Linda, hi, beautiful. Okay. Back to our prayers. Okay, so Gabe. Tracy Thiessen said, Losing my dog to cancer this week. Please pray for my family. And Lynn and Kay Powers prayed over her. Sharon Gazaway posted hearts. Which I think that just means pray unspoken prayers. Lynn and Kay Powers prayed for her. Yeah, I'm at Brenda's house. Um, Annette Douglas said, please pray for my sweet son and I. Tia. Okay. And there was prayers sent for them from Lynn Rutledge and Kay Powers. Hi, Linda. You look, look, my hair's natural. Look, I got all the blonde cut off. It's all me now. Look, I love this haircut because I can, I like wisps. You know, I like this. And I love that my sideburns are white because it, you know, it's like everybody thought I had got my hair streaked and I'm like, no, this is it's me <laughs> because it's like, it's got like streaks of white in it. You know, it's groovy. I like it. Anyhow, sorry. Annette Douglas said, please pray for me and my sweet son and I and Tia. Um, Melanie who is one of our admins and top contributor, it says, continued prayers for sweet Slay and Selma. Slay with Selma. She had another close scare. She needs a miracle in order to survive. That's her only hope and I believe in miracles. Unspoken prayers for her family and herself and prayers for all of you that are a part of Mama D's page. And of course, prayers for our sweet Mama D. Aw, love and prayers to all of you from me. That's our Melanie. That's our, don't we have the most wonderful? Stay live, okay, Betsy. Um, and of course, Kay Powers and Lynn Rutledge replied to her. Laura Johnson, said, please, continued prayers for Laura Johnson and Nicholas, her son. Thank you, and God bless you. And, of course, Lynn and Kay prayed over her. Michelle Longwith requested prayers for her POTS disease, her lungs, asthma, vertigo, dizziness, continue to stay cancer-free, her lymphedema, and her arms and chest, finances, Family needs to be saved. New school year safety for her granddaughter, strength, and her daughter with her, her other daughter with her issues. And of course, Kay Powers and Lynn Rutledge replied to her with prayers. Would, would you like to, like to hear like how they respond? I love them so much. I'm just, I just really love these ladies. So Lynn said Michelle Longwith. Father God, Michelle is faithful 
in her prayers and we ask you to answer and bless her life and her family. Meet every need and desire, Lord, for her, her friends and each family member. Heal, save, protect and provide. In Jesus' name I pray. Prayer warriors, y'all. K Powers says, um, prayers for Michelle and her family. God bless you, Michelle and her family. Yeah. And Michelle was like, prayers for a friend that lost her boyfriend a few weeks ago unexpectedly. And Lynn and Kay prayed over her. Glenda Dimas with a whole bunch of hearts, which means unspoken, you know, two replies. They sent love back to her. Aubrey Powell said, Amen. Um, Jenny Lambert, love and prayers, please. And of course, Kay and Lynn responded. Millicent Morgan, prayers unspoken. Ramona Ramley, butterflies and prayers. Jelena Windby, prayers. And they're responding to each one of these prayers, both of them. Laura Sturgis, need prayers. My lease is up at the end of the month. The landlord is going, uh, is going up on the rent and I need a place I can afford. Thanks in advance. They responded to her and prayed over her. Ramona Vaughn, please pray for me to have a productive week. This knee pain I am having is really killing me. Please help and pray. Eight responses to that. Kay Powers prayed over her. Ramona responded. Kay responded back. Ramona, they had a conversation. Lynn Rutledge prayed over her, and her and Ramona had a conversation back and forth. My niece, Bethany Cowan in Missouri, needs prayers for her vertigo and her feet. She has tendinitis and heel spurs in both feet and can hardly walk some days. Six replies, Kay Powers and Lynn Rutledge and myself prayed over Bethany. Tammy Marmy, I'm needing some prayers for myself. It's something that can be scary, but at this point, I don't want to mention anything until I speak with the doctor, but please pray in hopes God will heal and give me a helping hand. And we all prayed over her. See, that's faith in Jesus' name. It's nothing, it's unspoken. Jamie Lowry Lehman requests prayers for her marriage, and they prayed over her. Bernadette Kelly, please, Mama D, having a very hard time with pneumonia. Something on my lung has to have a CT scan. Also, terrible pain in my back. Doctor says sciatica. Please, um, please pray for that there's nothing... So that there's nothing sinister. Amen and thank you. Lynn, Kay, and myself replied and prayed over her. Bernadette. Bernadette Kelly. Mm. Um, Linda Rapper needs lots of prayers. I had to go to the emergency room yesterday. I couldn't breathe. And my back and neck is feeling tight. It's going down my leg. They gave me a steroid shot and in said pain shots. And they prayed over her. Heidi Stokes asked for unspoken prayers, please. They prayed over her. Rhonda Hall, unspoken prayers. They prayed over her. Joy Meyer, unspoken. Kinsey Lawson, prayers for her. I've, I've got eye irritation and started Thursday and woke up with this. It's red 
and most irritated, and they prayed over her. Tamara Barr, I think it's, I think that's Linda's daughter or something. Prayers for my kidney disease, because her last name is spelled just like Linda's. We do have the best family, Linda. I felt blessed to be a part of this. Oh, we do, don't we? Really, you finally got your color, Missy. And it's all natural. How groovy is that? It's so groovy. I'm digging it. Okay, so that was Tamara. Prayers for her kidneys. We prayed over her. Donna Wheeler requests unspoken prayers, and she, she gave a hugs thing. Roseanne DePlick for her knees. They hurt so bad looking on getting gel injections. I had gel once and it worked. I need a few prayers. Prayers for Mama D, Jerry, moderators, and our whole wonderful group. And they replied and prayed over her, and I believe I did too. Mary Ringley, I'm in a nursing home. I have COPD. I can't stay here. I have to find a place to go. I need prayers. And they prayed over her. Donna Lynn Morgan Little, unspoken prayers. And they prayed over her. A friend of mine needs prayers for a for her daughter and mother relationship to be restored in Jesus name. Yeah, that that happened today. Um Janice Campbell, Jesus, you know that that's anonymous though. She asked not for her name to be put out there. Jesus, you know my pain and sickness. This is Janice Marinelli Campbell. Please heal me in Jesus' name. Please pray for me. Ah, So unspoken for Janice Campbell. And that, that's our prayers right there. That's all of them for this week. I'm going to open that because when I do it, like this connects us like rich people now. Superstar. Yeah. My hair. It's all natural. Doesn't it look different? Like everybody's like... It's so crazy because it even changes my looks. Meet my raw karabi. It's real good. There it is. Okay. Let's do a quick prayer and then we'll go back to the cabbage soup. Y'all ready? I'm gonna touch the cord because it's connected to you guys. And lay my hand on my laptop because it's connected to the prayers. Okay. As of touching anything, the Bible says, as of touching anything, if you touch anything and you come into agreement, it shall be done. So we're going to agree together that everybody that has made prayer requests or everybody that's on here that has a prayer request, God already knows the need. And I trust him, and I believe that he will move. Thank you, Casey. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come before you with praise and worship, with glory and honor. Lord, I ask for forgiveness for all of my sins, for all my iniquity, known and unknown, remembered and forgotten. Jesus, make me righteous in your sight. Come into my heart, Jesus. Live within me. I confess with my mouth that, that God sent you here, his only begotten son, to die on the cross for our sins and raise from the dead and so that we can be saved and have salvation. I confess that with my mouth, Lord. Lord, as we come together in agreement, standing on your word, James 5 says, Confess your sins one to another. Pray one for another so that the mighty prayer of a righteous man will availeth much. Lord, and we know we're righteous now because we prayed the sinner's prayer and we ask you to make us righteous. And you told us in your word, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. 
So, Lord, we seek your healing powers right now over physical health problems, marriage problems, family, salvation for the lost. Lord, we pray for, for direction over our governments and our leaders. Lord, because your word says in, in uh, First Chronicles that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear their, their prayers and forgive their sins and heal their land. So, Lord, we ask that you heal our, our land touch our country. Lord, we pray for blessings over Israel and Jerusalem. Lord, we pray for those that that are, are needing housing for the homeless and the jobless. We pray for the widows and the orphans. Lord, we lift up the first responders that stand on the front lines every day, the policemen, the firemen, the healthcare workers, the pastors, the ambulance drivers. Lord, all of them, the military, the veterans. Father, we ask for a hedge of protection around about them, and we ask for divine intervention. Lord, give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding before they react. Lord, so that they make the right choices. Lord, so that people can live. Your word says that as blessed is the man that will give his life for a friend. Lord, they don't even know us and they put their life on the line. So we pray for blessings over them and a hedge of protection. Father, in Jesus' name, for every prayer request, sickness, unspoken, marriages, relationships, Father, everything. If I've forgotten anything, Father, you already know as we spoke out the prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name, we lift them all up before you. We ask that you move in each situation, in each life, Lord, in each need. You said that if we love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and all of our strength, that you will give us the desires of our heart. Lord, some people need homes. There's some people that needs jobs. You know, some people are getting ready to meet you. Lord, they're getting ready to leave this world and go into eternity. Father, remind their family members to pray that sinner's prayer with them, even if they can't talk, to prepare their soul for eternity, Lord. In Jesus' name, I ask that if you have to send your angels to them, Lord, to have them pray with, with the angels, Lord, because you said in your word that it is, not, it, it is not your will that even one soul be cast into hell. So, Lord, we pray for, for the lost. I know I lift my children up for you, Lord, and I ask that you save their souls, that you guide them and you direct them. Lord, I, I know Michelle asked for her family. A few of us, Lord, lifted up our family. Lord, and we declare and we decree that no weapons formed against them shall prosper. Lord, we decree that your word is, is in the land of the living. Lord, we speak blessings over them that they shall prosper. Lord, that the chains will be broken, whatever keeps them bound. Lord, that they, they shall be successful. Lord, you know, this is one of the things that I want to pray about. Lord, I was watching this um, this special. But I, I don't know if it was on the TV or if it was on my laptop. I don't remember, Lord. But this kid, he must have been maybe 17, 18 years old, was at a, a pride festival somewhere. There was a pride festival going on and these church members came to this pride festival to what they called share your word and tell them that they're sinners father th this is this is the thing lord 
You said this is what you told us. I gotta check it. I hear it. I gotta check it. Lord, you told us in your word. This is what you said to us, Lord, and this is this is this is why it bothers me so. You said in your word that no man comes to you unless you first draw them. And I know it is our job to share your gospel, Lord. I like I get that. And it would have been one thing, it would have been different. I personally feel had of they went there just to tell them, you know what, that how much you love them and that if they ever need you, that you're there for them instead of picking them apart for their sin. Lord, you told us in your word that we all sin and fall short of your glory. Lord, and when people pick apart others because of a certain sin that they feel is worse than the sin that they commit, Lord, I feel like that's being judgmental and picking people apart on purpose. Lord, you, you told us in your word that there is no sin greater than another that we all sin and fall short of your glory. Lord, that's what you told us in your word. And it really troubled my heart that they would seek out these individuals and try to and try to point out their sins to them. That that really it, it affected my spirit and I can be I could be wrong Lord if I'm wrong please reveal to me Lord I'm asking for you to show me if I'm wrong but if I'm not wrong Lord I ask in Jesus name that you bring peace to all those people that felt attacked and picked apart Lord by them people that chose to go out there and 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 just what I felt like was bullying. Father, in Jesus' name, you told us that, that you have made a plan for each one of our lives, Lord, and that you would, you, that, that, that you will draw us, that, that no man comes to you unless you first draw them. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask right now, Lord, that that if they were wrong, Lord, that you reveal to them people that felt like it was their duty to to share their sins with them. Lord, in Jesus' name, I just ask for your help. It just troubled my heart. And this is why, Jesus, this is the thing. You know, so many, so many people that have chosen a different lifestyle has been picked apart and bullied and it caused them to, to take their own life, Lord. So right now, Lord, I lift up every individual that was affected by anybody that was picking them apart, Lord. And I, and I pray for their help. Lord, if I'm wrong, reveal to me, Lord. I ask that you reveal to me in Jesus' name. Lord, show me the error of my ways. Oh, that juice is hot, but it's good. And bless and sanctify this food. In Jesus' holy name, we ask it. We thank you and we praise you. And everybody said amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. There it is.
So what is your guys' idea about that? I'm really, really curious. Like, I feel like... I feel like it's not okay to pick people apart for their sin. I'm at Brenda's house. Yeah. I'm at Brenda's. I am at my sister's. And I spent the afternoon with my brother and my sister-in-law. Visiting. I am at Brenda's house, y'all. We are at Brenda's. So, what do you guys think? Like, seriously, like, what do you think? What y'all thinking? Hmm? What's your idea? Nobody has an idea? What happened? I missed it. Cindy, you're grounded. We was praying. Okay. So this is what happened. So the other day I was watching, I don't know if I was watching it on the TV or if it was on my laptop, but it was this, this young kid that had went to this um, pride festival with his church. And they were, they had some kind of a bullhorn and a, a speaker or something, and they was saying things to the people that was participating in the this um, Pride weekend. And um, just, just, well, that kid ended up getting arrested, and he didn't understand why. He didn't understand that bullying is not okay. And and all the adults that was there with him didn't seem to understand that bullying is not okay either. So the, how they interpreted it was because they feel that being gay or homosexual is a sin, that it's their duty to tell these people that it's a sin. I struggle with this. This is why. I think that we are who we are. The word of God says that God has made a plan for each one of our lives. He has made a plan for each of us before we were ever formed in our mother's womb. Okay? Also, the Bible says that no man comes to God unless God first draws them. So no matter what you say to somebody that is living a certain lifestyle or whatever the case may be, and you feel the need to tell them, I personally feel like that's bullying, and this is why. God says every man sins. Every. He even made an example. There was a woman that was a prostitute in the Bible. And they was going to stone her to death. They was going to kill her. Because she's a sinner. They was going to kill her and they was going to stone her to death. And Jesus said, you who are without sin, cast that stone. Cast the first stone. You know what else he said? He said that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. He says, if you judge people, the measure that you use to judge people, so shall you be judged with that measure. And this is what I think. I think whatever sin that we commit, God knows, God, God knows our sins. He knows everything. He knows what we're gonna say before we say it, okay? He says, no man comes to me unless I first draw him. He tells us to share his gospel. So what is his gospel? What exactly are we supposed to share? We're supposed to share that God gave his son to die on the cross and raised him from the dead. And he beat death so that we can have eternal life. 
So, I don't understand how people are okay with themselves knowing they emotionally destroy someone. It's the same. Like, to me, that... And adult people, they do this. And they, they don't... There has been so many stories that I have heard and witnessed where a gay person was told that something's wrong with them and they committed suicide. That's not okay with me. That is not okay. Listen, God knows everything. God knows what he's doing. He knows what we need. We, listen, I know I keep saying listen, sorry, but I'm so passionate about this. I could cry. You know, Jesus sat at the table with the sinners. He sat with them. He ate with them. He drank wine with them. He sat with them. And people murmured and said, look at him sitting over there with them sinners over there. He's a gluttonous and a, and a drunkard. That's what they called Jesus. And Jesus, knowing what they were saying amongst, amongst themselves, he said, Pretty much in today's language, I'm going to say. He was like, excuse me. What y'all talking about? What do you mean? Do you think I came here to help somebody that didn't need help? Did I come to heal the well? Uh, no. Oh, crick. I came to heal the sick. So you know what? Judge lest you be judged. You know, it's like you, when you point your finger at somebody, you got three more pointing back at you. Don't bully people. Love on them. That's what Jesus did. He loved on them. He said, you know what? I love you. Come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. See, that's what I agree to, Melly. I believe that judgment is by God. I believe so, too. Everything when God happened, who do bad? Yeah. So this is the thing. I think we, if we see somebody that's sinning, to approach them with bullhorns and loudspeakers and signs and broadcast, you're such a sinner. Look at your sin. Look at them. Look at, look at, look at. Why would somebody even want to do that? Listen, what if the very first time you discovered your body, your parents stood out in, in the front of your house with a bullhorn and signs and speakers that said he, this, he or she is filthy. They touched themselves or they did the... That's not okay. No. No. I don't believe that's okay with God. I don't believe that God is a bully. Do I believe that God is a God of judgment. And I believe that we're all going to be judged. But I think that he said, these are my commandments. These ten commandments, you are to have no other God before you. What does that mean? Don't put anything or anybody before God. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. What does that mean? If you see somebody that's, that's hurting or needs help, love them. Help them. If you have it to give, give. Reach out, pray for them, love on them, help them. You know, if you have it to give, give. That's what the word says. It really says that. Let me pull up these Ten Commandments just so that I can go down them. And this is what he says. He, he says, if you follow my commandments and you love me with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, I will give you the desires of your heart. He says that if you ask me to forgive you for your sins, I will forgive you. He doesn't say, he, he says to go out in the highways and the byways. And, and bring them in. That doesn't mean beat them down. 
you bring them in and you love on them and you show them the love of God because you may be the only peace of God that they'll ever encounter. You know what I mean? Oh, that dinner smells so amazing. Wish you guys had smell-a-vision. Okay, ten. Commandments. And I need my glasses, y'all. Okay, ten commandments. In a, it's in Exodus 20. Okay. Mm. And God spoke all these words, saying... I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a, gra a graved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth below. That means like, I personally think that means like, all these like angel figures that people put all over their house or these pictures that they draw of Jesus and look at it like it's God or whatever. This says don't do that. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. It's right. That's right, Betsy. That's why God tells us we are our brother's keeper. To, you know, you are your, you know, take care of your neighbor. Okay. Number three. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. See, to me, I think that means when they say the GD word, I think that you're in trouble. I think that's taking... Some people take that as just saying, like, you know how we'll be like, oh my God, you know, that... It's like using his name vainly. And I do that, and I don't want to do that, and I repent for every time I have ever done that. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all that you want to do. All the work, you and your son, your daughter, your male servant, or your female servant, your livestock, or your sovereign journer who is within your gates, anyone who lives in your house. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is then in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Now that doesn't mean you have to get ridiculous and not get dressed and not clean yourself and not go to the bathroom and not cook dinner and not, no. That means don't do any work. Don't, like, you know, if your neighbor's car broke down, you can help your neighbor. You know, but it means, like, you know, don't go out on purpose and, and try to make money and work and, you know, just disregard. So you're supposed to try to keep the Sabbath holy. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. That's number six. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. 
you shall not steal. Number eight. Number nine, you shall not bear fault witness. Fault witness against your neighbor. What does that mean? My, my, my. That means when somebody tells a lie on somebody that is not true, that's bearing false witness. That's a lying. And people suffer consequences when other people lie on them. Just like I'm doing now with FB. Somebody lied and said I threatened them. And they lied. I never threatened anybody. Yeah, that's the ninth commandment. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. That means, or your neighbor's wife, or your neighbor's male servant, or his ma female servant, or his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. That's what this means. Okay. If you see somebody that has a beautiful home and, you know, rich people stuff and rich people car and rich people clothes and, you know, they've got money and they've got everything that, and then you're jealous of them and you want what they have. That That's, that's a sin. That's one of the commandments. You can't do that. This is one of the things that I always do on purpose, just, just to slam the devil in his gut. When I see somebody that has a beautiful home, we will ride by and look at the rich people stuff. And I always say, you know what, Father? Thank you for blessing them with them beautiful things. Don't be jealous of people because they have something you don't. That's what he's saying. Don't do not do that. Be happy for them. Speak blessings over them. Don't wish you had what they have. No. That's, that's no, no. Let's see. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. Okay. Now, when all the people saw the thunder and the flares of lightning and the sound of the trumpet, trumpet, and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. That's when God was taking his finger and he was writing the Ten Commandments. I'm new to YouTube. Betsy, well, welcome to our new family over here. How you like it? Are you digging it? It's just like the other platforms, except this platform seems to be so much smoother. There doesn't seem to be so many trolls and bullies over here. There's real, there seem to me, I think there's a lot of real people that even if you're, you're sharing something that, that they're not into, they're cool with it. They don't care. They'll, they'll just, you know, support you and watch you and subscribe to you and just show the love that's how they do over here and that's why i love it over here so much i'm kind of digging it over here i'm really digging it over here okay let's go check our our, our cabbage soup okay oh my goodness are you guys ready i'm going to turn you around just so you can see it looky here okay look at that's cooking up mighty fine look at that y'all I haven't even put the green peppers or the yellow squash in yet, but they cook up really quick, so I'm going to try to find the chicken and pull it. I may have to use another pot. My brother Gerald was like, I want some, and I'm like, I'll drop you some off in the morning when I go home. See, this is why I don't like plastic spoons, because they bend. Look right there. That was a piece of chicken. 
this is why I like metal and wood look. You can go like this and just pull that up from the bottom. Look at that, just like downtown. Yeah, baby. That chicken is down there, son. I don't know if I can get it. I have got this pan so full. Chicken thighs. You all see that? I have this simmering because it's trying to pull it up. Over. Hope we didn't get a piece of chicken in that one. Sure didn't. Oh, I see a piece right there. See it? Right there. Put that over in our bowl. There's two pieces we got. There's another one. I don't know if that's just a piece of chicken. some of this out into another pan. Three pieces of chicken. We need one more. I thought I seen another one. Well, that's just a piece of chicken right there, isn't it? Yeah. There it is. Right there. Look at that. How about that? It's like downtown, son. Look at that bone. See if there's any bones in that one. Nope. Yay, we got all four pieces. Look at that's cooking up mighty fine. Okay, now I'm gonna put my green peppers in there. That's my bell peppers. That's a, that's a partial red pepper that Brenda had in there. And that's one green bell pepper. that around, push it down, push it down, way down. Okay, I'm gonna put some of our yellow squash in there. So yellow squash and green pepper cooks up really easy, really quickly. So that's one of the reasons I'm putting them out in last. And I've got weak hands and if I put too much pressure, this arm was broken three places and my wrist was crushed at one point in my life. A black guy come across the parking lot and threw me up in the air. Then when I came down, my arm hit the cement and it 
shattered my wrist and busted my arm in three places. That's another story we'll talk about one of these days. There we go. Okay, we're just going to let that go. And all we have left now is our diced tomatoes. Got some of that juice in there. But tomatoes, as you guys know, is the last thing. And I do got some corn that I could cut off of here. And this corn we got from the, the farmer's market also. So I'm just going to cut some of this in here. Is it one bad spot on this one? So I'm gonna avoid that. Let's see right there. But we'll avoid that piece part. Right there. Yeah. Nothing like fresh corn right out of the field. And I put this in the microwave. In the, I don't know if you guys know you can cook your corn in the microwave. This is what you do. You put your corn with the with the uh, leaves on it, with the peelings on it. Don't peel it at all. You soak it in water for about maybe 10 minutes. Just put it all in there. The corn cob and the peeling, what do you call them? Husks. That's the word I was looking for, the husks. You soak it in water for about 10 minutes and you put it in the microwave and you cook it for seven or eight minutes. And then when you take it out of the microwave and you, you cut the bottom part off where it was grown to the thing, you just cut that right off and the corn slides right out with all the hair gone and everything. And it's cooked perfectly. And it's true because Brenda and I has done it a few times. When we want corn, we'll just put it in the micro, well, we'll soak it in water and put it in the microwave for seven or eight minutes. And it's done. You just cut the end off and pull it out. And there it is. Okay, we're gonna let that chicken cool. And while that's cooling, we're going to come over here. Oh, no, it won't reach, will it? I'm okay. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to wash these bowls up. I'm going to put this chicken stock back in her cover. Got more karate over here. I forgot there was too much. Okay, I'll just throw it in the top of that seat. Just like that. There it is. It's like downtown. There we go. Okay. And now we'll do the dishes. What do you guys think? So there it is. There are so many kids that live across the street and they're always out there in their driveway because this, I'll show you guys in a minute. This is a trailer park and they're always playing basketball and you know, like all the games we used to play we, when we were younger. They do, I just love to sit and watch these kids play. They all just join together and take turns. Shoot, even the little ones with the bigger boys. They shoot that that ball up in the, and they, they don't even got a basketball. Shoot, that makes me want to go buy them a basketball so they have a real basketball. 
and they just stand out there and that the girls, the boys, the little ones, the big ones. I love it. Yeah. Having a riot out there, y'all. Wash up my dishes. Might as well chit chat with you while I do. is so dull. I wanted to go outside and sharpen it on the cement. I really had a time with that knife, let me tell ya. See this bowl. are done. Counters all wiped down. This stove is a mess. I have made a mess. I'm gonna have to tear her stove apart and scrub it. Okay, let's set over here for a minute. There we go. Look at that. I stuck the rest of them karabis in there. goodness. This is the juice. I got some juice so I can taste it. Oh my. I'll tell you what. I love me some cabbage, y'all. This is healthy soup right here. because and if it needs more we'll put it back how about that just like that there we go just like downtown mm -mm -mm. And now I'm going to turn this around I'm gonna flip this so the fresh veggies I just put in there We'll go down underneath. Just like that. How about that? That's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oops. There it is. And this chicken is still too hot. Boy, that's just falling right off the bone, though, y'all. Look at that. That's right off the bone. So tender. That's what I'm talking about. And that's hot. Let me wash my hands. I touched it. Okay, there it is. We will take 
take pictures. Matter of fact, let's go take a picture of it right now. While we're at it. Look at that. Let me see. Look at that right there. It's getting there, y'all. And there's the chicken. Still got to put the miters in there. There's the broth. You know, I could probably pull a little bit more broth out of here. We'll pour it over that chicken in that bowl. How about that? Just because I want to put them tomatoes in there. And them tomatoes has got juice. See, that's better. Let's get some of that juice out of there. And this afternoon, Brenda and I had BLTs and she had some tomatoes left. Yes. So I just diced them up. Look at that. Ma, ma, ma. Let me get my big one right here. Mix them tomatoes down through. Oh, I overflowed it back there. Do you hear it scream at me? Whoops. I'm making a mess. I already know. Whoops. Whoops. Dock on it. Let me get my washcloth, just cause I'm making a mess here. There we go. There we go. Yep, there it is. And now, all we gotta do is just let this simmer and cook. See, I'm pulling up some from the bottom, just so it'll all mix. There we go. Just like downtown. And there it is. Dinter. How yummy does that look? You know what, let's do this. Look at that nice little piece of chicken in there. See some of this chicken that's off the bone I can just throw over there. There we go, look at that. Chicken, oh, you know what else? Parsley. That's what I did. I'll save them for last. Let me sprinkle some of that. Tuck it in. There we go. Yum. Denter. For five families. Y'all already know. I'm going to share. Share. I'm going to. What am I going to do? Share, sprinkle, splatter, shimmy, and shake everywhere. So there it is, you guys. Dinter. Okay. Let's go to the bathroom because I see my hair is sticking up everywhere. I'll show you what it looks like when it's combed. When I'm not fingering it. 
I always got my hands in it, messing it up. Nice, look at that. I really like my hair. Isn't that pretty? Look at the, you guys can see the back. Look, it's got a little length to it. There it is. All gray. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. There she blows, boys. Right there. Okay, y'all. I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm gonna finish simmering this dinner the rest of the evening. I'm gonna let it simmer for about three or four hours on the stove. And then I will let it cool down and do its thing. Thank you for spending the evening with me. I appreciate you, every last one of you guys. Ridiculous soup, too many ingredients. Well, if you have a garden, you know, Patty Daly, if you have a garden and you like vegetables, this soup will freeze up so good. So I don't think it's that ridiculous, and I'm so sorry that you feel that way. I mean, to each his own. You do you. I'll do me. How about that? But thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And so I really love cabbage soup. And I love all kinds of vegetables. And the thing about this soup is it freezes well. You can freeze this soup for up to six months, or you can share it with your family. You can share it with your neighbor, you know? So I love veggies. I love a good cabbage vegetable soup. I just do, you know? So, okay, you guys, thanks for spending the evening with me. I'll probably, so I have a doctor's appointment, Kalamazoo, tomorrow at two o'clock so it takes about two and a half three hours to get home so i think i didn't bring this home wow she's home early she... no No, nope. that's not her, darn it. So I will probably be leaving here about, not that we can go live because I can't. I'll probably be leaving here about 10 or 11 in the morning. So I will pack my vehicular up tonight and we will hit the road and I will be home tomorrow. Kalamazoo, that I live close to Kalamazoo, Cindy. That's where I live. I'm just in Detroit visiting my family. So, yay. So there it is. So I will be home tomorrow when you get home from work. Mr. Barrio, Mr. Barrio. I want a big bowl of that, please. Okay, come on, Melanie. Hey, Audrey, 2023. How you doing, beautiful? So yeah, so tomorrow, I will be um, heading home, and um, next week, we are, let's see, so today, I am doing a countdown for when we go back live over there, I'm making chicken salad sandwiches, <gasps> yum, are you putting grapes in it, Melanie, and walnuts, like Paul does? So good with grapes and walnuts. Thank you, everyone who hit the thumbs up. Yes, thank you so much for showing the love, for hanging with me, and just chilling with me while I'm in my happy place. This is my happy place. I'm excited about November. I know. Um, 
So, that person keeps backing up and going forward. Uh, I don't know who that is. And, um, no, November the, when? November, let me see, let me look again. I believe it's the, let's see, August, September, October, November, the 9th. The 10th. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We leave on the 10th. And we come back. No. Yeah. We leave on the 10th and we come back on the 20th. Or on the 19th. Something like that. So there it is. I'm so glad. I know, I love you guys so much. I got to see my little Missy. Yesterday, little Missy came over and I made some cinnamon bread and I sent a big old bag of it home for her and the kids because it's a healthy cinnamon bread. And um, so her and the, and the Chetlins came over last night and I got to visit with her for a few minutes and that was really groovy. So today, Awesome grapes and walnuts. Oh, it's so good, Miss Purple Apple. If you put that in your chicken, put some onions and some celery and some red seedless grapes and some walnuts, you crush some walnuts up. Oh, put a little mayo in there, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of lemon juice, some dill. Oh my goodness. Listen, Paul Dow. If y'all know who Paul Dow is, if you follow him on TikTok or Facebook or even on YouTube, let me tell you something about Paul Dow. He makes the best chicken salad sandwich in the world and he puts it on croissants. And it is amazing. It is just an amazing. It is so good. We will make it one day. Matter of fact, we will make it one day. I know what when we finally do go live, one of the things that we're going to be making, and Josie's, Josie has called me every day. She misses Mama. She said she will help me to make some um, cabbage rolls. She was like, that sounds so good. I was like, will you help me roll it up because the cabbage is this big. It's this big, you guys. It's huge. And so um, she was like, yep, as long as we can make some summer rolls. So it looks like summer rolls is on our agenda. And if you guys know what Vietnamese summer rolls are, it's like we use a rice paper and we put like um, basil leaves and like um shreds of carrot and shrimp and um like just some lettuce and you know you roll it up in this rice paper and you make a peanut a homemade peanut dipping sauce so good green onions you like sliver your green onions so there's green onions in there so that's another thing Melly, you're going to have to go to Washington, baby girl, because our house is so small. It only has four rooms. It's got a bedroom, a living room, a kitchen, and a bathroom. And the one little room... It sounds like it's boiling. It is. It's so small. Needs stirred. She does have a bigger pan in there. She's got that big old yellow one. She usually gives candy out. But that's good. I'm just gonna pile that up just like that. So there it is. 
Okay, you guys, I love you. And I will see you when I see you, man. God bless you. From Mama D to yours. I will talk to you later.